A lot of the time when we complain about a product around here, we still have to acknowledge that the trade-offs made some amount of sense. I mean, I'm sure every engineer would love to make the thinnest, most powerful, coolest, and quietest laptop with the yeah. best battery life. But the real world is full of compromises. There's one segment where we feel like all the technology is there and someone just needs to have the stones to build it. So I present to you our vision for the perfect gaming TV. The Corsair One features a compact form factor that is fast, quiet, and, you guessed it, compact. Check it out through Amazon or Newegg at the links below. Let's kick this off with a little disclaimer. This won't be a cheap TV. This is our concept for what would be the flagship of our gaming TV lineup. So from here, any TV manufacturer watching, hi TV manufacturers, could create value options with some of our ideas cut out. The first crucial feature for our gaming TV is low input lag. Modern TVs run powerful processors, and in many cases, even full Android computers in them with enough power for everything from 4K HDR Netflix to complex near real-time image processing. And yet, any cheapo monitor that I grab off the floor in the office will have lower input lag than almost any TV on the shelf at the store. And there is no good reason for it. I've heard it directly from a large TV maker that they intentionally leave a lot of processing on even in game mode so that if stupid end users watch movies in game mode, the image will still have that Instagram filter vividness. No! So we would be using an OLED panel for CRT-like pixel response with a processing delay like the best gaming monitors of one to three milliseconds, and game mode would run a simple sRGB color profile with factory calibrated, accurate colors. Speaking of responsiveness, once you've used a high refresh rate display for gaming, there's really no going back. So our TV's electronics would be capable of driving its 4K panel at 4K 60 Hertz or at 1080p at a higher refresh rate. 120 Hertz would be okay, 144 or 165 would be better. And we'd also wanna build in a mode where you can choose to interpolate the reduction in resolution or use one to four pixel mapping for similar sharpness to running at native resolution with basically just bigger pixels. We'd also throw in support for both G-Sync and FreeSync, which can be done if you're willing to use two separate input modules. But to fit those in, along with some of the other features we wanna add, we realize that some of the thinness will have to be sacrificed. Though I honestly feel these days like most people wouldn't care that much about an extra inch. For gaming, I'd rather have a TV that's thicker but has the goods in it to be able to do away with a standalone receiver. So let's talk inputs. We want all of them. First off, DisplayPort. Why the f is this not on TVs already? It's a royalty-free connector with tons of bandwidth and great support for variable refresh rate. Just put it on. So ours would actually have two, one for G-Sync and one for FreeSync. And then as far as HDMI is concerned, four seems like a pretty good number for the back. Current gen consoles from the big three and a set top cable or satellite box. Then, oh, we're not done yet. For our older inputs like RCA, S-Video, Component and VGA, our perfect TV would include a high quality, low latency video resolution upscaler, basically an integrated FrameMeister. We'd have one set of inputs at the back for your favorite retro console with another set at the front for that PS2 or SNES that you only pull out of the closet once in a while. Then while we're at it, another HDMI would be nice and a powered USB hub for retro controllers and charging VR gear would be swell. On to audio now. 
we came up with a really flexible solution for that. It should come with bookshelf speakers, like a Mackie CR4, but ones that are mounted to the side of the TV. The audio signal could be passed to them using contacts on the side of the set, so no wires, but we'd also want them to be able to be easily detached and repositioned using standard speaker wires. That way, you could clip them on, discard them entirely, or integrate them into an aftermarket surround setup. The audio outputs for the rest of which would just be good old fashioned speaker wire running on a high quality amp and DAC, along with RCA and Toslink if you've got your own. Another no brainer that we haven't seen enough of, easy pairing with Bluetooth headsets including support for multiple discrete audio streams. And you would need that for our next feature. The PSTV had the ability to show a completely separate full screen image to two players using 3D glasses. But since then, with active shutter glasses and OLED panels, the potential for in-home stereoscopic 3D has gotten much better. But I don't wanna use it for stereo 3D. Imagine this gamers, you and your kids are wearing the A glasses, gaming on a connected PC and speakers, while your wife and her friend wear B glasses and watch 50 shades or whatever on their headphones. Each side is losing half of the vertical resolution, but from my review of LG's 2016 OLED, the half resolution experience at 4K is still excellent. Let's talk remote now then. It would be Bluetooth because anything else is kind of stupid. And also so that you could easily use your phone as a remote without a built-in IR emitter. Also, it would be pretty sick if it had a built-in keyboard and could be switched like some of Logitech's keyboards to control a PC as a gyroscopic air keyboard like this one, then just be switched back to the TV. On the subject of using widely adopted industry standards, hmm, what kind of stand would we use? Maybe some kind of like weird, like two feet on one side. No, how about VESA? Why do TV manufacturers keep reinventing the wheel here? For both our 42 inch model, which we think would be perfect for a dorm or a bedroom, and our 65 inch model, which is a great large format size for the living room without needing to be transported to your house on a flatbed, this solution would allow the user to mount the TV however he or she wants. A couple final housekeeping items while we're dreaming. RGB mood lighting on the back could be controlled through the smartphone app, controlled dynamically using an integrated dream screen controller or over USB with integration with Razer Chroma. And one small thing that would make this TV much easier for use with a PC would be the option to disable HDCP 2.2 on a given source. I've had some issues with it not allowing me to see anything until the Windows driver loads, meaning no BIOS adjustments, unless I go grab an extra monitor. So let us know then in the comments, is there anything that you think we missed? And do you guys agree that if we're gonna be expected to spend four to $5,000 on a high-end TV, well, there should be an option with features that are meaningful for gamers, because honestly, I don't see why the vast majority of what we proposed couldn't be done for around that price point or a little higher. Casper is revolutionizing the mattress industry by cutting out the costs of dealing with resellers and showrooms and passing that savings directly to the consumer. So in a nutshell, they're selling premium mattresses at a fraction of the price. Their mattress is obsessively engineered and is made of supportive memory foam for a sleep surface with just the right amount of sink and just the right amount of bounce. Their breathable design sleeps cool to help you regulate your temperature through the night. And I actually got my new Casper mattress. Well, I shouldn't say one because we actually got two and it's super soft and crazy comfortable. One of them is actually for me to take home and use. And the other one is gonna be going in one of our sets. So a huge shout out to them for sponsoring this episode and hooking us up with like a crazy comfortable bed for something that's gonna be a filming set. Try sleeping on a Casper mattress for yourself. You can buy it easily online and it's completely risk-free because let's face it, going into a showroom and trying out a mattress for 
five, or even if you're willing to stay there all day and sit on it for five hours is not enough. Casper offers free delivery and painless returns within a 100 day trial period so that you can know for sure if you're gonna be happy. Check out the link below to get $50 US or 65 Canadian off a premium mattress using promo code Linus. So thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured. Maybe contact your favorite TV manufacturer and point them to this video. Also, while you're down there, you can buy a shirt at our merch store and join our community forum, which is where you can talk about this video. Woo.